discuss what I call uh, overcoaching when a player is in the batter's box ready to hit. And there are two issues here. One is that the people in the stands, parents or friends, will be yelling out instructions, and also some of the people in the dugout too. And we've all heard this before, like put your elbow up, put your elbow down, move up in the batter's box, move back in the batter's box, choke up, put your hands down. And all we're doing is uh, confusing the hitter, we're raising tension with him, and we want to remember that a relaxed hitter is a dangerous hitter. So once the player is in the batter's box, we really want to be, have him be as relaxed as possible. So in essence, what I'm saying is give as much instruction as you could to your team and your players, hitting instruction, but once they're in the batter's box during the game, let them succeed or fail on their own. Now this is a very important video clip to help your baseball season. Taking a small loop path on a ball hit to the outfield is the proper way to run toward first base because it creates a better angle for the runner to touch first base and stretch out a double. Place a cone approximately 7 to 12 feet before first base and have the players run around the cone and touch the base on the inside corner to create the best angle for continuing on to second base. If runners run in a straight line on a ball hit to the outfield, like they would if they were trying to beat out an infield single, then they are not putting themselves in the best position for the double. Even if their intention all the way is to stay at first base, taking the loop path allows players to round the base in case there's an errant throw.